Okay, so um, the botany section report for 2020-2021, I'm just going to give um, a couple of the highlights from that. Um, Sarah very, has very nicely put this together, so thank you very much for your work on that. And obviously what you have had is the detailed account of David's talk, so you'll be able to read that through. I haven't kind of gone, I'm not going to go through that here, but um, it was a very interesting talk and it's a recording that you can watch on YouTube if you'd like to. So on the 12th of November at the AGM, David Bevan gave his outgoing talk as chair of the botany section on the ancient woodlands of North London. And that was the first time that we'd given the, the talk um, on delivered by Zoom um, because of the COVID pandemic. And the talk was much appreciated. There was a lot of chat and it's actually been a very popular recording on our YouTube channel too. Both the outdoor and indoor meetings remained suspended um, because of the COVID pandemic. And there was a hiatus in the outdoor meetings between the Brompton Cemetery meeting at the end of March in 2020, which was the one that Mark Spencer ran, until the Box Hill meeting 18 months later, which was on the 5th of September, 2021, just outside actually the reporting time. But um, it was good. It's been really good to see um, some meetings starting to happen again. There have been three so far this autumn and three more planned before Christmas. And then there's two already planned for early 2022. And attendance has been good. Um, we held um, both the popular winter indoor events. We held them online in early 2021. The best botanical photos and the botany quiz organised as always uh, very ably by George Hansom and John Swindells. And I expect a number of you probably attended those, so that was great. Um, LHS has obviously also continued to run the series of virtual talks on Zoom, and a number of these have had a botanical theme. And as I mentioned already, recordings are available of all of those on our YouTube channel. So if you haven't caught up with the YouTube channel, do follow up and have a look, because there were a lot of very good talks on a range of subjects, but you know, a number of them really interesting botanical talks by some excellent speakers. Um, these are the accounts which you kind of need to see as under the rules, but they're very, very simple. So there was uh, £82.58 brought forward and £82.58 were left and we didn't spend, in, in the budget section didn't spend any money. So those are both quite straightforward. Um, I'm then going to just go through uh, the recorder's report. Um, basically, Andy Overall has given us a report on uh, the London fungi. Um, and about his work, particularly in Richmond Park. So we're just going to finish off with having a look at that. So despite the lockdown, uh, he had been commissioned to actually carry out a fungal survey, or no, a fungal survey of Richmond Park, and the survey was obviously delayed for obvious reasons. Um, he'd actually first surveyed Richmond Park back in 20, 2008, and during the second um, survey. He's been accompanied by field mycologist Mario Tortelli and sometimes uh, Jeffrey Kibbe has been there, obviously another great fungal expert and our various other guests. Um, he commented on, on he, he's obviously again you can read the detail of his, re of his report, but a couple of kind of interesting comments that the park um, looked little changed from when he surveyed previously and in fact he thought it looked in a very good condition but as the survey progressed, certain negative factors were, became apparent. The two major factors were that of a huge rise in the number of people utilising the park, and that's something that people have commented on on other um, parts of London as well, accompanied by rising traffic pollution levels. And both of these, obviously, there's a concern that they'll have a detrimental effect upon the fungi that will be present in the park. One issue particularly that's been noticed um, by local people and by the, the wardens of the site is that there are people walking on the roadside verges and that's something that just is about the sheer numbers of people and that's something that really hasn't been um, uh, happening in the park previously. And obviously the roadside verges are an important habitat for various grassland fungi so that's a bit concerning. But actually on the positive side the results from his survey were far from negative and he was actually really very pleased with the outcome. So, oh, I'm losing the top of my screen, which is a little bit annoying. So here's a couple of things that um, that he saw during these, a couple of sort of like the highlight species, really. Um, and I'm hoping that you can see the top of this screen because I can't. So we've got a couple of species that he's seen, a species of Ammonita, and at present, 
this is something that possibly is new to science. They're not actually, I think, I'm not quite sure where the work, the study of this and its DNA is at the moment. But certainly when um, Andy was putting together his report, actually they really weren't sure what, this, what species this was. And that was found on hornbeam down at hand bottom. And then a rather, another rather rare species, Ruberolitus legalii, was recorded from no less than three separate spots along the hornbeam walk one of which was with Carpina speculus, which is an unusual host for this species. And both of these are among 44 other species recorded as new to the park during 2020. So that was a really fantastic outcome. The lockdown also allowed for the Richmond Park golf course to be surveyed. And that was an opportunity that obviously people isn't often afforded and it's something not to be missed. So that was all very positive. Um, and they so actually they found as he found as well that it was you know having access to the golf course was really very rewarding so there were some great records in including Ammonitis simulans with populus agaricus porphyrizon among leaf litter and nocoria bohemica with mixed populus and quercus stands so upon completion of the survey in august 2021 a total of 407 species were determined from 806 records and among these, amazingly, there were 50 species new to Richmond Park, 19 of which were new to Greater London. So that was actually amazing um, and a kind of nice counterbalance to what's, you know, the kind of negative impacts that obviously has been from such heavy use of the park. So thank you very much to Andy Overall for that really interesting report. There's a complete list of the species that have been circulated to everybody. So if you want to kind of follow that up, and obviously, if people want to get in touch with Andy and discuss any of that, he's very welcome to, he's very willing to talk to people about his findings. So thank you very much for that.